first of all, thank you for 200 subscribers, that's awesome. Um, this will be a two-parter, so first part I'm going to show you something cool about the Noodler uh, working with VCV Rack, second part will actually be the um, the sound and the stuff to do with it. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy. So for the past few months or so, I've been using this, which is the Noodler, and essentially generative sequencer, that's all fine, but the way you interact with it is you press these buttons and it basically gives you your, school, uh, your scale degree um, and creates chords for you. But I was thinking in the interest of generative music, which I do love, we're going to create a generative sequence into the Noodler in order to trigger the Noodler in a specific way. What I've got in front of me, uh, if you don't know, is VCV Rack. It's essentially a digital version of modular synthesis um, and a modular synthesizer. So, first of all, what we're going to do on the actual Noodler, go into our settings um, and then clock out. We want to make sure that our clock out is 24 ppq which is basically just kind of the accuracy in which it'll um, update the clock. And then also we want to make sure our clock in is set to internal, which means that our noodler is actually gonna be our master clock. It's gonna be our master brain. Um, and in VCV Rack, I've got a master clock here. Um, this just goes out to all of the other clocks that I've got in other racks. And if you're worried or intimidated by this setup and by VCB rack, uh, I should have a couple videos soon. Um, all about kind of the basics and going back to basics. So let's bring this in with the MIDI to CC. And if I go Noodler, then I should just be able to take the clock output and according to this guide that I use, the clock output you can see it's now throwing some BPM but you can see it's a little bit weird. So the thing is, is with clocked you need to set it to 24 ppq and then it says 90 there, it says 90 here. When I change the tempo you can see it changes in uh, software as well. Okay, so we've got our MIDI clock and we've got that from the Noodler going into VCV Rack. Now, what we need to do is I've actually pre prepared uh, one before this, which is essentially what we are going to do and what we're going to be working off. So that doesn't matter because we're using the clock from here. So we're going to be using something called a Turing, or it was originally from the Music Things Turing machine. And it essentially, we're going to be using permutation and specifically the, eight, uh, the 12 U version of permutation. We can actually go down to the 6 HP version, make it a little bit smaller. So what this does is this takes a clock source i.e. one of these and it either sends a 1 or a 0 and if it's a 0, it sends a 1 with a probability of... Uh, it's a bit difficult to explain. There's a lot that you can do with it um, and there's a lot that I don't know about it and I'm still learning. So that is going to be taken into a custom scale because if you have a look at the MIDI documents for... Oh, that seems to have mucked up a little bit. Um, if you have a look at the MIDI documents in the back of the manual, what you'll see is it actually has a, um, a range and a set of notes which will trigger the internal, essentially these buttons around the edge. And that's what we're trying to do to create a random sequence. 
So you can see here, that's what I've done. Then we can do sequence, which will be yellow, going into the input, and you can see it's starting to jump around a bit. Oop, oop. So essentially what this is gonna do is it's gonna take all of the data that's being fed out of permutation and shrink it down to a select couple of notes, which then we're going to output to MIDI. So we do CV, CV to MIDI, going to Noodler1, then we do our Vault per Octave, and then we do our Gate. And what that means is whenever it does change, it will send an output. But we're on channel one, which we don't actually want. So inside menu, if we go to here, you can see Noodler Control is channel 15. So if we ch change that to 15, we'll start to see we're getting a bunch of chord changes, which is fantastic. Now, one of the other things that the Noodler allows us to do is it allows us to change the chord type. So Alt 2, Alt 1, Sus 4, 7th, 6th, Triad. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up another one of these. Uh, let's literally just duplicate it. Bring it over here with the same clock source from this. And going into the same same idea, but this time we need more than one octave because the actual notes that we're going to be using are slightly different. So if I just reference back to here, because this, this just took me ages to figure out exactly what the notes were, um, even though they're all in the back of the manual. Into voltage, into gate, and now we should see, hey, there we go. So we've now got chord changes as well. Now obviously we're going to want to, uh, if I turn on motif one, right. So I had to do a bit of trickery, but essentially in order to get some of my other system working, I just had to change uh, the clocked modes instead of to receiving BPM uh, to receiving um, CV, which is you know fine. Um, so, we've got a sequence playing, it should just be a do 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 sort of thing, and we're going to make some sound with it. There we go. So just using the re-trigger input. If we throw an ADSR in front of that, and we use the envelope, uh, that's modulation. So that's our re-trigger. That is not what I'm, um, filter. So all we're gonna do for that is just give us that. And this is channel nine. And some of that bit crush to revamp. That's nice. So that's essentially how to do that. In the next video will, because this is part of two parts. The next video will basically be just a jam um, with all of this idea. Basically, I'm not touching the actual noodler. The noodler is doing all of the stuff itself um, and taking all of that information and making music with it. <laughs>